Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here's your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's topic is the truck and hustle story with my friend, Ramel Watley. How's it going, Ramel? Awesome, Joe. How are you, sir? Doing great. Guys, please stay tuned and listen. Ramel's got a great story. He's doing some very cool things. So, Ramel, please introduce yourself and your company and where you're calling from today. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling from uh, New Jersey, South Jersey, right near Philly, greater Philadelphia area. Who do you cheer for? I'm not a sports guy, Joe. I can't I, I can't even lie to you. I wish I could say I was a Phillies <laughs> fan and that's not really me. I've never really, you know what, to be honest with you, I, I stopped really watching sports like early 2000s, man. You, you, when, when everybody started like getting together, making these super teams and you couldn't depend on the same person to be on the team for their whole career, that's kind of when I lost my love for sports. So I'm, I'm not really a sports guy, but for the sake of for the sake of argument, I'm actually originally from Brooklyn, New York. So if I'm gonna cheer for somebody, it'll be Giants or Jets or somebody like that. No, I'm, I'm with, really I, like I feel the, the same way. Like I'm I'm um I hate when the team trades somebody and that that guy is associated with the team. Like LeBron's right. done that. I just like when he left <laughs> when he left Cleveland, it was just like like a dagger in the heart. <laughs> Right. And, and it's impacted like, you know, the way like kids look at sports. Like now we follow players as opposed to follow teams. Like, yeah. I mean, you have fanatics that will still follow the team. But for the most part, it's like, who's your favorite player now? Not who's your favorite team? When I was growing up, right. it was like the team, all about the team. The team never changed. It stayed the same. And you could, you know, you could buy the jersey. It's not like one day they're wearing one jersey and now it's another jersey. You got to switch. So no. too much for me, man. Too many, too many moving parts. <laughs> so not, not really a, a, a huge sports fan, man. More into just business entrepreneurship, ah, just that, self development. That's that's kind of my thing. Truck and hustle podcast. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I've been in the trucking, the transportation industry, for almost 20 years now. I started out just simply getting my CDL. I wanted to become a driver as a means to an end. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do, but it was something that at that time I felt like I had to do. And I quickly realized that driving a truck wasn't for me. How many years did you drive? Not No years. Literally like, <laughs> I literally like passed the class. And like when I went to the first interview, I actually had an opportunity to not drive as opposed to drive, become a dispatcher. So I never actually drove. I didn't have to drive, right? So I did enough to pass. I still, you know, know how to work the gears a little bit and all that, but I never had to drive the truck. So I got into uh, like more so operations, right? As a dispatcher, worked for a small mom and pop company called Bond Transfer. They were based out of Maryland at the time. They had an account at this place called Ball Plastics. Basically, it was a Pepsi account. So what they would do is they would have like the, the, the resin, the little resin balls that come in to create plastic bottles. They would come into the warehouse. And like these little small balls, it was like amazing. I never really understood this until I worked for them. Like these little, really small, like they look like little mints, right? They come in and then they go into this machine and you see the machine work. And then before you know it, you have a plastic bottle. We put those plastic bottles on 22 pallets and we ship those bottles out or 48 foot trailers off to all the Pepsis all throughout the nation. So that's where I got my start in, in, in trucking, just learning, learning through them, right? Worked with them for about four to five years kind of cut my teeth in operations, end up running that account. And then I went on to work for Ryder, which everybody probably has heard of. Oh, Ryder. Yeah. Everybody knows a big, big Ryder Red, right? So I work for the RIL division, which is kind of like one of their local Wait, what accounts. Is, what is RIL? What is it? It's called uh, the Ryder, Ryder Integrated Logistics. That's what it's called. Yeah. So basically it's like their local accounts, right? Because you know, Ryder has rental, they have like their deliveries, they have so many different verticals that right. they, spaces that they work in. So I, I work for the CVS account. So basically my account was delivering to different CVS stores all throughout our region and our area. Went, worked on, worked with them for quite a while, about six or seven years. And then I went on to start my own business doing driver staffing. And the, the way I got that idea was when I worked for Ryder, we would have these these times in, or these seasonal spikes, right? These times when we would we we typically hold about sixty drivers or so, right? And 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 that was like our main pool. And then we had some outside pool that we could reach out to from other rider accounts. But sometimes when we had seasonal spikes, as you know, like CVS is like when there's Thanksgiving, when there's Halloween, when there's Christmas, any holidays, 
there's just a whole bunch of, you know, products coming in that they have to get out. So they need more drivers. They get more trucks, more trailers and more drivers. So what they would do is they they look to these companies called leasing companies or driver temp agencies to get drivers. So I would build relationships with all these drivers and these companies. And of course, just being curious, I, you know, I started looking at some of the paperwork and I'm like, man, these, you know, I, I, how much you getting paid again? And they're like, oh, we get about 20. And I'm looking at, I'm like, oh, we're paying them about. 35 40 for the driver per hour so i'm just doing my little simple math and i'm like hmm, i wonder how much of that margin they're actually taking home so it became pretty interesting to me and i started a business doing just that after i left what's the name of the company so my first company was called ultimate driver staffing that was i started that in 2015 then i sold that company and i I started another company and that's called uh, mega driver solutions currently and that's in mount laurel new jersey nice nice and so it is driver leasing Yeah, driver lease and CDL, class A, sometimes B, but for the most part, we focus on A. And it's all local, right? So it's like, we don't really do over the road. A lot of people like reach out to me like, hey, I need a driver. We don't really staff over the road because it's just the complexities of that. We more so focus on like local accounts, kind of like accounts like Ryder, where they have same day, guys work 14 hours and they're home that same day. And that's kind of like our wheelhouse. I tell you, I feel this. Uh, and you probably you're a lot closer to it than I am, but I feel this way. You don't find a lot of drivers. The average age is like 55 years old or something for over the yeah. road. And I think you're going to find a lot of those guys as, are the, as they get older, if they can still drive, they're going to say, you know, kids are grown up and out of the house and the uh, house is paid for. I want to work six months a year and then I'm going to go to Florida or California, wherever I'm going to go. And or they might say, hey, look, I want to work four days a week. And I think we're going to, we in this business are going to have to accommodate some of those baby boomers and as they get older, because we need them. (laughs) And I would also say there's going to be people, I think you see it with post pandemic, we were learning people feel differently about their job. And I think you're going to find, you know, maybe it's mom or dad says, I want to be working nine months a year, but I'm going to be off when my kids are off because they're going to be out of the house for, you know, yeah, for sure. And I mean, that kind of, and, and, and I believe, I, I agree with what you're, what you're saying fully, right? It's kind of like the gig economy with like uh, Uber and so forth. Like people want to work on their own time. People want flexibility. They want freedom. And it's funny you say that because a, a good portion of our drivers are those exact types, right? People who are semi-retired, they, they, they still have like insurance. Maybe their wife has insurance or they have some kind of policy from the military or something. So they're covered with their medical, but they still want to drive a couple of days a week just to make some extra cash, right? Some shoebox money. So they'll work three to four days a week and they have that flexibility to come in. They're, they're great drivers. They'll get the job done. But then when they want to be off, they want to be off. They don't want to be tied to a company you know, five to seven, five to six days a week, you know? Right. Well, it's a demanding job, but too demanding sometimes. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm always stuck on this is at one time we decided we need this pension system, Social Security. So when people turn 65, they can retire. Well, at that time, the average age in America for dying was before 65. So that money was like the survivors, right? Well, now right. we live to like, what, 78, 80, something like that. And so the idea that all these guys leave the workforce and um, my son-in-law is an investment counselor. And I know he said his big message to everybody is don't retire. He goes, I got all these guys that got plenty of money, but nothing to do. So they call me all day. Hey. And he says, they call and say, hey, I want to move some of my portfolio to silver. He goes, could you turn the TV off, please? Right, right, right. I think think now, man. You got nothing to do. Our aging community has a lot more energy for some reason now. Than oh, yeah, we're, maybe, we're healthier. We live longer. Right? Li- living longer. Everybody's healthy. And then there's so much more a- opportunity in the world, right? There's so much new things. I think that's what it, the, ha- what it, it has a lot to do with the fact that the world is changing, right? So it's not like the world is boring. There's so much different things you can do. Oh, yeah. We, we're in. also not doing heavy lifting. As I mentioned, my, exactly. my mom's family moved from the coal mines in Pennsylvania to Detroit. She said, you know, we thought we won the lottery. Did we ever go to a job that was indoors? <laughs> that yeah. Nobody's yeah. dying. Good pay. And uh, But even factory work was hard. 
there was a lot of you think about your what your parents and grandparents did there's a lot of them doing jobs that were physically demanding by the time they got to retirement age their back hurt their knee hurt <laughs> they just needed rest us we're all pushing pencils they're pushing paper anyway let's switch gears for just a second i want to talk i know we, you got three things going on first off you got truck and hustle podcast we'll come back to that you also have mega driver solutions we talked a little bit about that and then you've got this freight fest coming up here which is a conference november 4th and november 6th in houston we'll come back to that but before we get to all that tell me a little bit about you where'd you grow up where'd you go to school give us tell us a little bit about you before you started uh got your cd oh i got into trucking right so okay so i i i was born in brooklyn new york moved out of brooklyn at a very young age moved to new jersey kind of like a suburb type of mixed area place called heightstown new jersey right uh that's where i went to high school after high school I was about 17 years old. I went out on my own. I, I didn't go to co- college. I got accepted to about three or four colleges, but I decided to chase more of an entrepreneurial route because I just thought that was what was for me. Now that's in. <laughs> now now that's in, right. Now now, now it's very popular. Before you had to explain to your mom and dad why you were doing exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, they thought I was crazy, for sure. They thought I was crazy. But you know, I always knew that you know I, I can kind of make it out there. And I had a bunch of ideas. And I just kind of went out there and kind of explored, I guess, the world for about explored the world for about three years, I would say, right? I had that kind of like that that time. Wanderlust. Really get, yeah, wonder and get to know who I was as a, as a person, as an adult, as a business person and so forth. And, you know, long story short, things didn't really work out the way I planned them, right? My, my, my entrepreneurial journey that I was going to venture upon didn't really work out. So I had to come back to the workforce, right? So I, I came back to New Jersey. I ended up moving back in with my parents for a very short period of time. I actually worked for AAA for a little while, just kind of got some odd jobs to kind of get by. And 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 through working for AAA, that kind of started to pique my, int- my interest in transportation in general, because I was exposed to it, like with the tow trucks, right? And then just through meeting some people there, it kind of subtly kind of built into, hey, why don't you get your CDL? And I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. That's not really for me. But hey, at the point I needed something to do, I said, hey, why not? Let me try it. So I tried it, got the CDL. And that kind of brings us into that story of when I kind of got that first opportunity, didn't drive and kind of got into dispatching. Very nice. Very nice. So we talked a little bit about your mega driver solution, which is lease, driver leasing. Talk a little bit. Well, what What is truck and hustle? Truck and hustle, man. So Truck and Hustle is 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 my baby. It is a platform. It is a community. It started off as a podcast, right? Just like we're talking myself and you, right? It started off- What all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what all the cool kids are we, We're sitting at the cool table, man. So, so I started this podcast in 2019 in the interim of I had just sold my first business and I was going to soon start another one. But in the interim, I had a little bit of a break and I just wanted to do something that was, you know, kind of giving something to give back and then just something that was fun. That was more of a passion project. When I was younger, I was into music. So I always liked the idea of being on a microphone, being on a stage, talking to people. I've always been pretty confident and, and never. Well, what kind of music were you into? Rap music, man. Um, hip hop, hip hop music. I, Who was your favorite? Nas. Nas. Are you familiar with Nas? Sure. Then yes, that's my favorite. Nas <laughs> is my favorite. Jay Z, Biggie Smalls. He's from you know my neighborhood, in Brooklyn. So these are the guys that I came up listening to. So I always aspired to get into the music industry, but life hit me really fast, right? To where I wasn't able to chase that dream. I, I, I did record music, but I didn't. I wasn't able to really pursue it. So when I became a business person, like when I had that break, I was able to do something, but I was like, man, I'm too old to start, you know, being a hip hop artist at this point. Right. I'm not going to start a music career now. And at this point I have a family, I have a wife, I have two children and that lifestyle is definitely not, you know, conducive to what, you know, what I'm trying to do. Right. So I said, what can I do to still be able to live out my dreams, still be able to impact people with my voice and still be able to do something that's fun. That is, that resonate with me and with me, and that's going to be. I'm gonna. It's, it's going to make me happy, right? So I. I was always listening to podcasts. I, I. I don't know how many podcasts you listened to before you started podcasting, but I was very big on like Pat Flynn. Oh yeah, I know him. Income, yeah. Right, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. 
these are the guys that kind of inspire me in the podcasting field, right? So I would listen to their podcast about just entrepreneurs doing really cool things, whether it be online or wherever they're building their businesses and just how they built their businesses. And I fell in love with those podcasts and, and I kind of fell in love with those podcasters, right? I, I, I just had such an attachment to them. Like they were like heroes to me right? because I would spend every morning listening to these guys, whether it's on the commute to work or whatever the case may be and listening to these stories, they became like kind of ingrained in my DNA. So I was like, man, the podcast and platform is so powerful. It's more po powerful than any other platform to me because it may not be as large of a platform to where people can find you. Like, let's compare it to a YouTube, right? You can make a YouTube video. It could go viral and maybe 100,000 people will see it. But it's kind of fleeting, right? They'll see it and then they'll get something else suggested. It's still a different audience than podcasts. Right. They'll get something suggested to them and then they're on to the next, right? But if you have 100,000 people on YouTube versus, let's say, 1,000 people on a podcast that tune in and listen to you every single week and every single time you publish right they're they're waiting for you you're you're a part of their life so and that's how it was for me and i knew that that was the case because that's how i felt i would wait for that that podcast right. notification to pop up and and jump on my favorite podcast and i and i didn't miss miss one right so just knowing that i said man i would love to to start a podcast i think it would be amazing so either way kind of fast forwarding you know i i want i try to figure out what would i start a podcast in at first it was going to be like you know just general business maybe like personal development, maybe just encouraging people to be themselves or be the best version of themselves and that kind of thing. But then my business mind kind of kicked in and said, well, if I'm going to start something, I have to, I have to a attach myself to something, right? It has to make sense. I have to build a community somewhere. And at that very moment, it's where it's like one plus one equals two. Why not do it in the space where you've been working in all your life, right? Where you, where you, everything that you know, where you, where you have all your friends, where you have all your network and you can talk about what you do, right? So that's where the, the, the idea of truck and hustle was born. I did some research and I said, you know, let me see what else is out there. And frankly, I didn't really find a lot of podcasts out there about right. trucking or transportation at that time, right? It wasn't much. It was a few, but the few that I did find, it didn't really resonate with me. Quite frankly, I was kind of bored by them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to them, right? So I hadn't found your podcast yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the challenges, though. There's no barriers to entry, which is a good thing. Anybody can start, and and anybody can build that community that you mentioned. But yeah, there's not not every. Not every podcast is great, and they go away after a while. But a lot of them do, and and it's it's um also what I found is if you got a day job, it can get really hard to do this with a day job. It can it, it it can because it's very demanding. And see, the thing is, is what people don't understand about podcasting is once you once you start, you you can't stop. Like once you get yourself <laughs> into that routine to where you have listeners, like depending on that cadence depending on that delivery of that show every Monday or Tuesday, whatever your cadence is, it's like you feel like crap when you don't deliver on wow, that day. Yeah. It's like, I have to get that. And I know you can resonate with this because you're a podcaster, right? So you, it's a very demanding and, 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 and tough job. It seems easy and a lot of people get into it. And that's why most of them don't last, right? You have millions and millions of podcasts being started every day. They call it pod fade. And I think if you look at all the podcasts out there in if you look on average, 80%, I haven't published anything new in the last three months. That's 100%. just the nature. But I think that's 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 the nature of it. You know, it's interesting you mentioned how you got into it. I used to listen on, on the way, way to work. I would listen to this, these guys in the morning, Drew and Mike in Detroit. And they started to feel like over time, like, like they were my friends. They were like my family. And then I remember they went off the air and they were the number one morning show in Detroit. But they're on, they were with the rock station. They, they, but they had been there a while. And they were older and they got paid a lot of money. And uh, they went off. And I remember I was at a family function and my cousin said to me, can you believe Drew and Mike are off the air? And I said, yeah. I go, man, I, I miss them. He goes, he goes, I feel like I lost a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then somebody said, Drew and Mike are on the, I have a podcast. And this was like a year later. And I was like, oh, no way. Oh no way! Uh, yes, and they yes, publish. Yes. They publish every day, and I and I love it. And by the way, it's better because it's a podcast, so I can stop and start. Listen when I want. It's unfiltered, right? You don't. You don't. You don't have. You don't have people over your shoulder that the radio restraints, right? You by the way, what's it. so crazy now is I get in the car. I don't ever turn the radio on. There's no. 
there's no station I want to listen to. If I'm not listening to an audio book, I'm listening to a podcast or Spotify music. None of it is. And by the way, I was listening to a football game the other day on the radio and it sounded so horrible. And then when there was a commercial, I was like, I'm going to try and fast forward. To, oh, no, there's none of that. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, right. so so what's the focus of Truck and Hustle? I think I know from the title, but who do you who do you who do you talk to on that? Who's your target audience? So our target audience are, you know, small trucking business owners. Our, our sweet spot, I'd like to say, is somewhere between that one to five truck. But we, we target like 20 trucks or less, right? What would be considered a small carrier, right? So 100 trucks or less is pretty much There's considered a, a small carrier. There's a ton of them out there, though. Right? A ton of them. But they make up the majority of the industry. And they're very, very, they're completely underserved, right? So to me, the, 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 the different medians that I did find out there, they were kind of targeting the more mega carriers and more the, the, the bigger enterprise size thousand trucks. For many and, and companies, more. it's hard to do business with small companies. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I wanted to do was bridge the gap. Right. Try to get some of the, the resources and some of the access that some of these you know mega carriers and some of these legacy carriers have and, and kind of get some of that information and instill some of that into some of these smaller carriers to where one day they could become the mega carrier. Right. Because that's 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 the dream. That's the dream. So that that's pretty much what our sweet spot is. And, and that's who we kind of talk to. So what we do is, you know, we we tell stories, man. We 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 like to educate through, I like to say, in, in, information and inspiration. So we have entrepreneurs on our show every week, every single Tuesday. We're talking to usually a different entrepreneur from a different vertical or niche or niche in, in trucking or transportation and logistics. We're talking everything from you know, it could be a person who's a fleet owner. It could be a person who's a, a a freight broker or a dispatcher, or you know, they do government contracting, or they do you know maritime, or they do air freight, they do ocean freight, whatever. The the complete supply chain, right? Warehousing. We're talking to all the people, right? Because that's the key. Like these are the people who are actually in it. You know, putting the sweat every day, actually making this happen. So we talk to those people and we get their stories. And, and number one, we want to understand their origin, kind of where they came from, how they got started, why they broke into this industry. And then number two, we want to get the information, the how. Like, okay, we understand why you're in it, but how, 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 how do you do it? And how do you sustain and how do you stay in it? Right? Because that, that's the key. Everybody's trying to figure out how to stay here. Yeah, I, I clicked on a few of the episodes yesterday just to get it, a sense for it. And I thought it was interesting because you had one on somebody who had some government contracts who had not made the money they expected to make on it. I thought that was interesting. There was another one, just a guy talking about, you know, finding direct shipper freight versus brokered freight and how much more money he made. <laughs> and, you know, these things are all kind of, you know, podcasts are anecdotal, but in its if you listen to a number of them, you listen to 20 of them or 30 of them, 40 of them, you start to go, I'm starting to educate myself. And I, th I think this is why people listen to podcasts like mine and yours. It's not to be entertained. Hopefully they're not completely bored while listening, but it's to learn. And by the way, the, I say this all the time on my podcast, we're in this enormous industry and you can be an expert in freight forwarding and know nothing about over the road. You can be an expert in technology and not know anything about final mile. You can be an expert in shipping over the ocean and know nothing about how to manage a warehouse. And that this is the nature of our, our business. I, we can, we're in these silos, but the companies we serve, the supply chain, they want us to be end to end, or at least knowledgeable of end to end. And if you don't know what's going on upstream of you and downstream of you, you're, you're hurting yourself and you're hurting your customer. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think it's important just from, just from, you know, even if you're not in the transportation or logistics industry, this is how the world works, right? It's the, it's the economy. So if you don't understand just the basics of what's going on in the world, you're going to be kind of left behind and you won't know how to plan or you won't know what's coming or you won't be able to, you know, make good decisions because this is it, transportation is what pretty much keeps the world moving. So if you, if, if you have some type of sort of, idea of what's going on it's, it's going to help you out personally even if you're not working in the industry per se right because ultimately you're still affected by it you're still impacted by it the reason we could talk right now on these you know cute mac computers or whatever you're using there is because somebody delivered it on a on a truck right so it, it, ultimately we're going to be impacted by this industry in some way shape or form yep so i want to switch gears and talk a little bit about freight fest so what is that and when is that 
Yeah, so so Freight Fest is coming up very soon in about three to four weeks. It's going to be in Houston, Texas. It's Friday, November 4th through Sunday, November 6th. 6th. It's a three-day conference. It's our inaugural conference. So it's the first conference that we've ever done. We've, we've done other events, but they've been more so meetups, right? Just like-minded people connecting and getting a network with each other. But this is going to be more so speakers, presentations, Q and A's, and the networking component as well, all combined. Right? What, is it the same focus as truck and hustle or? Yeah. So like, what I like to say, it's like truck and hustle on steroids, right? Because we're going to bring the truck and hustle experience to the world stage. So you'll be able to see, you know, all of these different verticals, right? On the stage and, and a display of the, the, the subject matter experts talk about these different verticals. And then at the same time, we'll bring it all together because there's still going to be that foundational uh, information that regardless of what vertical you're in, it still applies, right? You still need some type of finance component. You still need to understand, you know, factoring some type of compliance, you know, these are insurance. These are going to hold true regardless of what part of the industry you're in, right? So we have those components at, at the core. And then we have the other components to where it's like, okay, if you're, if you're new and you want to, you're trying to figure out your way, you're trying to find your way, you can look around and say, Hey, that, that oil and gas, that's interesting. I never even thought about delivering frac sand. There's an opportunity there. Yes. Yeah, a huge opportunity there. Oh, you know what? Dump trucks. There's all type of, you know, work going on in, in my area. I see these dump trucks on the road all the time. And you know, how, how, how do they get paid? How do they make money? Oh, well, you're going to talk to our guy who talks about dump trucks, right? So we just have a bunch of different verticals and people in one building that'll be able to talk about these different different ideas from their perspective, from their real businesses, and just share with our community and just educate, man. But like I said, tie it all together with those main financial components that every business needs. And that's what we're doing. So why did you choose Houston to have the conference? So so for a few reasons. One, I, I just love the city. It's a it's a beautiful city. You know, when I first visited there, the first time I was went to Houston was probably maybe five or six years ago, just for pleasure. And I just I fell in love with the city. Two, it's one of our strongest markets, and you could probably understand why, right? It's a very very the port's very big there. Right? I think it's the second largest port in America. If I'm not mistaken. I think that's one. That's yeah, one of the big ones for it's, sure. It's either two or three. So you know, transportation logistics is definitely big there. So it just kind of made sense. Our listenership, our audience, big market there in Houston. And then third, when I was considering, you know, putting on a conference, I was thinking of the places that wouldn't be impacted by all the things that we have going on right now in, 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 in the United States, you know, with COVID and all the, the different right. issues that we've been having, right? Texas is lawless, right? They, they, COVID's afraid of Texas. <laughs> COVID is afraid of Texas. It's not coming to Texas, right? So just thinking from a, you know, business person, business wise, I said, what's a place that's not going to impact our a conference. And I said, you know, maybe, you know, Las Vegas or Houston. And when I started breaking it down to Deucin, I said, you know, I think Houston would be the perfect place. And we just kind of landed there. And, um, you know, we, we found an a, a awesome spot, the Royal Sinesta downtown Houston, really, really nice, really nice aesthetic. And we just went with, went with it. Yeah. I've been a number of years ago, I spoke at a conference. Um, it was in Galveston, right outside Houston. Okay. And it was nice. And I, it was in November also. And uh, I remember thinking, you know, be, being from the Detroit area, uh, I got down there and I was thinking, oh, this is not Florida. It's not Georgia, but it was not bad. And I, mean, I went for a walk on the beach and uh, people were like, you can't go on the beach. It's too cold. I was like, this ain't cold. <laughs> it, was not, it was nice. But the, what a dynamic area. And I just I told is. you about, I was just reading a book and it was talking about of all the of all the places in the United States, Houston is a juggernaut because they have in huge industrial capability factory factories there but they also have this port and they're and they're one one of the largest states and it's just a hub i mean it's it's done well yeah it's thriving and you see you're seeing a lot of people move to houston it's just a lot a lot going on the my my only pet peeve about houston is everything is so far man it's like to drive to if you put in your gps and it says like something is like 10 miles like like five miles away it takes like like an hour to get there. It's like these roads are long, and yeah, you're from the crazy. northeast. You're used to everything being yeah, close. Yeah, I'm used to getting places quick, man. Everywhere it seems like it just takes forever to get in. Yeah, in that's Houston. the same. That's the same in Detroit. Like if somebody says, "Oh, we live in the Detroit area, we should get together," 
like an hour and a half away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aside from that, though, I, I love I love the city. It's Excellent. A beautiful city. Excellent. So what we'll do is I'll put a link to your conference in the show notes, and then we'll put a link. To, so if you want to get to that conference, also put a link to uh, Mega Driver Solution and Truck and Hustle. And so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you've started all these ventures, and you're still a pretty young man. What have you learned along the way? I've learned so much, Joe. It's hard to even kind of... It's, it's, let me let me let me let me say this. You know, first first I've learned that business is is easy, right? It's 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 easy from a standpoint of where it's like it's very simple. It's transactional, right? You have a product, you solve a problem, and if you find your audience, you can sell to that audience, and you can potentially make money, right? That that's that's business. It's pretty easy, but you know, when you start dealing with people and like all these other variables that's when it just becomes kind of tricky and just really understanding the the the, the nature of humans and, and 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 trying to serve people and trying to create things for people that they're going to like they're going to love they're going to use forever and that they're going to talk about right so it's like even though it seems like it's easy it's very it's very complex right and and and, and that goes with everything like if you know just talking about podcasting like we want to continue to serve our community and create different opportunities to kind of you know build our brand and and and, and build our yeah, and connect yeah and, and connect but it's like it's just hard to figure out exactly what people want right because everybody's just so different and you can't please everybody so you have to figure out how to get the best of you know the the, the best of those worlds and just create the right solutions for them right uh, years ago when i was still running a logistics company it wasn't mine. I was the general manager, COO. And um, I came to the conclusion that this business is simple. I, I, we go pick up here and we drop off there. We pick up here, drop off here. So it's simple. It's not a complicated business, right? But what I kind of came to the conclusion, it's it's simple, but not easy. <laughs> yes, and, and that's exactly, and that was a statement that I was wanted to say. It's, it's, I don't want to, I said easy, but that's what it is. Simple, but not easy. Right, and that's because it I seems learned. so simple. Go sell that guy. It's simple enough. He needs right. he needs to move some freight. You want to move some freight? How hard right. can it be? Just go. And it's funny. You think about. So I was listening to uh, somebody was talking about Lou Gehrig batting three hundred, batting four hundred, and they said, like the best batter, it hits four hundred. That means most of the time you fail. You're forty percent of the time you get a hit. The other sixty percent you don't. And look at sales. Sales is like ninety some percent failure. It's like a business of failure, and that's that's what we're most of us are in. A hundred percent. It's just all about consistency, man, and just doing the same thing over and over again until you get that result that you want. Right. right. So I want to wrap this bad boy up, but first I got a real easy question for you. Well, it's three questions in one. Okay. So what's next for you? What's next for all these businesses that you own? And then uh, what's what do you see next for the industry? Some some trends you see. You don't have to give us the whole, what's next for the whole industry. Yeah. So I, I'll start with just trends. I, I mean, I think technology is just obviously exploding. I, I, I think we're going to see so many, I mean, we're seeing it right now. So many different solutions being created for, oh, yeah. you know, carriers, you know, for shippers. To we were ignored for so long. <laughs> right. That we've ignored because of, because of the, the, the industry is so antiquated. Right. And it's been antiquated for a long time. But now we're finally getting into tech and, 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 and they're not shy in, you know, putting those ideas, you know, in the forefront. So I think just a lot of just new ideas we're going to see. Uh, a lot of you know, two sided marketplaces to where people could kind of interact and connect. People are always trying to save money, trying to be more efficient. So the, the, the more technology explodes and the more software explodes, I think we're just going to see more of that being implemented into our everyday you know, transportation and logistic businesses. That's just kind of what I see. And that's like maybe a little obvious, but I think it needs to be noted in terms of for me personally. Just keep on trying to add value. Keep on trying to get out there and, and, and just have as much impact as I can. I mean, my story is, you know, just like anybody else's story. I didn't have I, I wasn't, you know, I'm not a college graduate or anything like that. I came from just hard work. I built my I built my reputation through 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 networking and just through through learning on the job. And I've been able to get this far and, and build multiple businesses right from that. So I think I want to be able to share that story and be able to let other people know that. Right. 
Anybody can do it. It's not that difficult, right? Just get out here and just put one foot in front of the other and make it happen. And I, I think that's kind of like what I'm I'm trying to uh, trying to get out there. That that's my message. What's next for all those businesses? What's next for all the businesses? So for for Truck and Hustle, we're gonna continue to to double down on our podcasting experience. You know, we 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 have a visual component now. We we're not just audio; we're also on YouTube. But I want to keep on developing. Oh yeah, that. I have to look you up on YouTube. I, I, yeah, yeah, check us out on YouTube. We're so, also I mean, everything we do is on YouTube now too. So you guys, if you don't know. If you're when you're wasting time on YouTube, check out Ramel and me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we're we're actually so we go on location. So all these interviews that you hear on the podcast, we're actually also on location, sitting usually in a studio or sitting in the uh, the the entrepreneur or the the, oh, the, nice. the person's uh, space. So you'll actually see like like the gentleman you you spoke you, you listened to with the dump truck. We're right there in his in his space with his dump truck in back of us. You can see it, right? It's literally like right there. All my episodes are on location. It just happens to be my location. Your location, <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. So, 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 yeah, we want to continue to to just build on that visual component, right? Because just bring people, you know, more into into the world and just create, you know, like I would like to have like a TV show, man, like a well produced, you know, something that could, you know, compete on on like NBC we are far, or CNBC you are far away. or something. Right. So we're, we're trying to get there. So that's for the tr- for truck and hustle in terms of like the podcast, in terms of our other verticals, like our, our merch. Obviously, we want to continue to connect with our audience through our merchandise, you know, our clothing and then like our events. That's what we're really excited about now. You know, doing these events, we've had two successful events in, in the last six months and Freight Fest hopefully will be our third, you know, let's put that out there. And, you know, we just want to continue to do that, continue to connect with, with people and just continue to build our footprint throughout throughout the nation and then go global, man. We want to take Truck and Hustle all over the world because trucking is not, it's not, it's not a local thing. It's not only about, it's not domestic, right? There's tr- transportation is global. So we want to, to, to be able to get out of the U.S. and start expanding our territory there as well. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, we, we were talking about it prior to hitting record is, you know, there's so many immigrants get into the trucking business. People without educations who feel like maybe they don't have other options get into trucking. And it, it can be a great business. It's been a great business for a lot of people over the years. And yeah, my, my, my mom's grandfather and all her uncles, they were all in trucking and it took them from the, the coal mines over to Detroit. And they're like, Hey, this looks like a good place to do business. Move the whole family over here. And it's, it's done that for generations. And I think what's interesting about though is when you come from another country or you come from a place where you say there is no, nobody teaches you how to become a, a, a carrier. They might teach you to drive a truck. I think we need resources for how can I be successful as a driver, as an owner operator, as a small carrier. And with the, this is a competitive business. So you got to be really good at it. It can be, you can make a lot of money, but you can also lose a lot of money. So, so there's needs to be resources like what you guys are providing to help people become successful. No, I appreciate it. I say that all the time. This is a fast in, fast out business. You, you'll get, you'll, you'll get out of business just as fast as you get into it. Right. Because it's a low barrier to entry. Right. But because of that low barrier, there's not a lot of foundational knowledge that goes into it. So a lot of people get in fast, but they get out just as fast because they don't understand what it takes to run a trucking company. And it's a lot. It's very complex. Right. So you have to understand that you have to take it very serious. And, and I mean, even just from like you have people's lives in your hands, man, like these trucks on the road, like we have a responsibility to make sure that we keep in our public safe and, 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 and so forth. So it's a very, very huge responsibility. So anybody who's getting into this industry, I hope they take it seriously. And we want to make sure that we provide the tools and the resources so you have the proper education to be successful. Well, excellent, Ramel. I appreciate it. What I'll do is I'll put a link to all of these businesses, viewers, including Freight Fest, which is November 4th through the 6th down in Houston. I'll put those in the show notes so you guys can reach out and connect with Ramel. And um, I'll also put a link to your podcast so they can take a listen. Uh, you guys should make point of listening to all my podcasts all week and then listening to Ramel's also. You got time. Come on. <laughs> Stop watching TV. That's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, That's right. Anyway, I really appreciate it. It has been a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you for your time today. Yep. And thank all of you for listening to my podcast. Your support's very much appreciated. Until next time, onward and upward. 
You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.